Good afternoon, everyone. This is going to be a video about antennas for shortwave listening in this context. It's going to be about this antenna. Well, actually, this isn't the antenna. This is the power injector for it upside down because of the way the cables are rooting for the MLA 30 plus antenna that I have mounted outside against a wall out here. I'll talk a little bit about that mounting and I'll show you a picture of that later on in this video. This, I've relatively recently switched to using the MLA 30 plus. Before that I used, push some stuff out of the way here, I used this. This is about five meters of wire cobbled together from a couple of you know, sort of wind-up antennas that came with portable radios that I had at the time and put together, you know, soldered together, a little bit of heat shrink around there. And this was stretched around and I called this variously a seven or eight meter antenna, seven meters I think. This is about five, maybe a little under. And then running through the house to bring it in was, you know, six feet of uh, or so of, um, of cable. This is not terribly well shielded so you could add it into the whole length of the thing and call it, I don't know, as I said, a seven or eight meter antenna. And that's what I used for most of the time. Now the problem with this antenna was twofold. The first problem was this. This is, as I said, maybe shielded a bit, but it's not great. I tried to use this as a mic extension cable and it picks up, there's a, a power cable to the air conditioner that runs underneath the floor below me here. And uh, this does a very good job of picking up hum from that if it's anywhere near the floor. So yeah, it's shielded after a fashion. So that could be a problem. And of course that then is a relatively unshielded link that's inside the house picking up noise from the usual veins of shortwave listening, all the switching power supplies that my house, like everybody else's, is full of. So that's one problem. The other problem is that although there was lots of signal with this antenna, certainly more than enough signal for this Angian, because it's not directional and this is a very dense living environment with a mixture of industrial or business use, um, rail lines, uh, major construction projects, that sort of thing going on. There's a lot of noise and a lot of the noise is coming from the power cables in here, but a lot of the noise is also coming from outside and it would be useful to have an antenna that was at least slightly directional so that you could tune it to the quietest direction that's available here. So my next step after this was to build a loop and that's this one. This is a bit of a mess. I'll put a link to the instructions for building this loop in. This was not very effective. There's no gain. There's no, um, um, I mean, it, 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 this was just, it didn't give me much signal, but it did prove the point that by rotating the antenna or putting it in a very specific place, which is where the MLA 30 plus is now mounted, I could get a lowered noise floor, at least sometimes. Sometimes the noise is not great and there's just nothing I can do about it. But most of the time it would give me a slightly lower noise floor than I experienced with this. So I thought about a couple of ways to proceed. One way to proceed would have been to connect this to a uh, to a shielded cable to run into the house. Given that I had lots of signal and a good portion of my noise was coming from inside the house, uh, that might have been a viable approach. But by the time you add up all the bits and pieces you do, you need, you know, a balen or an onion, or I'm, I'm not even quite sure about the differences between all of those to match the impedance of this to that, and then you need a cable to connect it to your, sorry, I'll try that again, a cable to connect it to your uh, 
yeah. to your radio. By the time you do all of that, the cost is about the same as buying one of these. So I ended up buying the MLA 30 Plus. And what I did with the MLA 30 Plus is I originally set it up on a, uh, with a few pieces of garden stakes essentially to spread it out and I moved it around my roof deck out here. And I found that the best place to put it, which I will show you a picture of now, was the most convenient place to put it, which was on the wall just above the air conditioner out there. Now there is perhaps some issues when the air conditioner is running, um, but uh, not much anyway. And, um, and I've been pretty impressed. On a good day, the MLA 30 Plus definitely provides, in my view, a lo lower noise floor than this running through the house. But what I want to do today is today I want to actually test that. I want to put this back up outside run it cable. It won't run it exactly where I ran it before because I don't want to run it right by this antenna. I will shut the power off to this antenna when we're trying this one. And then I want to try both of them with the Sanjian here. Um, the Sanjian seems to have the best performing, I don't know, front end? I don't even know how to describe it, but it certainly seems the best performer with an external antenna of the radios that I own and uh, isn't overloaded by this and isn't overloaded by noise on this, which is also a possibility under certain circumstances um, with some radios. If you saw my Eden Elite Mini shootout videos, um, you'll see that that radio overloads very easily with an antenna like this and it overloads almost immediately with this. So let me get this set up outside. I'll run both cables over here and we'll see what we can do in terms of afternoon shortwave. So the random wire antenna is now up. Um, I managed to get some dust on the radio. Uh, the radio is set. At the moment we've got the MLA 30 plus. I'm going to unplug that from the radio and I'm also going to unplug the power supply from this just to sort of limit any interference it might create. Outside the antennas are some distance apart from each other. Let's turn this on and let's see what we've got. And I will just in the background here get the computer going so that we know what we're listening to. So we have a preacher uh, on 13845, which is WWCR. This is the overcomer. This is not surprising. The RF gain is up all the way. And we're on the 21 meter band, which is likely a not bad spot to be listening right now. We have some interference, some clicks and pops from electronic interference of various sorts, and a fair amount of just noise there. Okay, so let's unplug this antenna, and we'll put it over here. Uh, I, I'm aware that most of these radios will do fairly well with the antenna just kind of close to the... All right, let me make sure. I'm using a power bank to provide power to the MLA 30 Plus because my, the cable and the power supply I typically use don't reach. Okay, so... So I think we can hear a slight improvement. 
Let's go back to the other one. I'm going to try not removing the the uh, power from that. And you can see that the difference in the noise floor is fairly significant. Don't listen to the to the signal. Just listen to the noise floor. You might see this in the signal to noise remembers. Right. And then back to the MLA 30 plus. Yeah, you can see if you look at the signal to noise ratio, we're doing much better. And when the noise does come up or the signal does drop, we don't drop down to, well, there we did, but not quite as, not quite as, uh, as noticeably as it did with, uh, with the random wire antenna. So this is just from Nashville. I don't think we're going to get any great DX. I'm just checking to make sure that the power is still on on this, which it is. Let's see what else we can get. Well, not too much going on at 2 o'clock in the afternoon here. Let's try... 19 meter band. So that's one five five one zero. Oh. Okay. So this is from the UK. This is from Wolferton. This is Radio Sama. Um, in Arabic. Okay. Not strong, but certainly understandable if you understand Arabic, which I don't. You can try turning down the gain, but it doesn't make much difference. Okay, so let's try this. Oops. Let's not shut the power off to the radio. Well, it doesn't matter because, of course, it's got batteries. I'll move that over there, and let's try putting on the... The long wire. And so here you see something very interesting. We've actually got a stronger signal. Okay. Let's try again. I'll try. Right? You see that? And there, with a weaker signal, I've said long wire, it's a random wire antenna, is actually providing better performance. So that's very interesting. So what we can see then is that the MLA 30 plus does what it claims, right? It lets you null out noise fairly effectively, but of course it's now possibly in the wrong direction because it is directional. Uh, doing a little better now. I mean, but you can see that the signal is stronger in this context with just the random wire antenna.
Okay, I'm going to go back to the random wire and get this out of the way. Okay. It's clear. So I think this is a very good demonstration of the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, MLA30+. Plus. It does, certainly for most of the things that I tend to listen to, it gives me lower noise floors generally. However, in a band where noise is not nearly as much a problem, if we were in the 49 meter band, um, I don't think we'd find that the, uh, that, this, that the random wire antenna would ever be better. But here in the 19 meter band, which is generally quieter around here, I have a pet theory hypothesis as to what that is, and we may do a video on that, or why that's the case. We might do a video on that at some point. But, uh, you know, we can see that for that band, the, uh, the advantages of the MLA30 Plus are less obvious, although, we, again, we did see it with, with the previous uh, s signal we looked at. So, you know, like all antenna solutions, there's no magic cure to living in an urban area and having noise all over the place, right? There, your, your, your solution is going to be to mess around with various antenna options and see what works for what purposes. And you can see even from this little test, which frankly surprised me, I did not expect this to be nearly as dramatic a difference as it is. It's really, I mean, it's really... It's really quite dramatic. Um, just, well, by the way, I will show you, just to show one thing. So you can see if you unplug the MLA30, I mean, it's a pretty good signal with it, too. Now, what solutions could I do, what might I have to improve this further? Again, without spending a whole lot of money, because you can spend a whole lot of money easily enough. The most obvious thing to do would be to put the ML, get the MLA30 Plus off the wall, get it above the roof line on, you know, a piece of plastic pipe, and set it up so that I could rotate it. That would let me probably solve this problem, but that's a lot of trouble, and I don't know if I'm terribly inclined to do that right now. But uh, but that's certainly uh, that would certainly be an option to to trying to trying to get it back in. Now, what this does make the argument is is that of course in the winter when I'm outside less and don't feel like mucking around with setting stuff up that it might make a lot of sense to leave both antennas up and you can use whichever one you prefer. For people who are in urban environments, I would say given that the MLA30 Plus is worth your while. If you're in a suburban environment, one that's a little bit quieter than mine in the city here, then I think, I think there's very little argument for a loop antenna like that. You could build a large horizontal loop um, which would be perhaps advantageous in certain circumstances for listening. Uh, you could build longer random wires of various sorts. There are lots of different intended designs that you could potentially use. But I would, I mean, my first go-to would be run as long a random wire antenna as you can around your property and uh, and see how that does. Get the strongest signal you can and get it as far away from your house and your neighbor's house and the power lines and any source of interference that you have floating around outside. And that would be that would be my suggestion. Here in the urban environment though I'm a little bit more limited in terms of what I can and can't do. So the MLA 30 plus for everyday listening is in fact a, a pretty good choice. And you can see
It's really a pretty, it's really a pretty good signal with, uh, with both antennas. And as we're getting towards the end of the day, we will, this will, you know, the 19 meter band will gradually close down, but we should have a few more hours of good activity, even from the UK. Well, oh, it is starting to get dark there. So anyhow, I hope this was interesting. I hope I haven't rambled too much.